Me Too Fighting Series fans, this amateur light heavyweight battle is set for three rounds at three minutes apiece. First, fighting out of the blue corner. His record stands at four wins and six losses. His height, six feet, one inch. His weight, 204 pounds. He trains with Team 10 Bears and War Squad, and he fights out of Dayton, Ohio. He is your number five ranked B2 South light heavyweight contender, and his name is Rob K.O. Grigsby. And his opponent out of the one more gym red corner. His record stands at three wins and three losses. His height, six feet, two inches. His weight, 204 pounds. He trains with Spartan Fitness, SBG, Alabama. And he rolls in from East Birmingham, Alabama. He is your number four ranked B2 South light heavyweight. And his name is Rodriguez Sugar Bear. Dansby! Big time matchup, Andy, man. You said it best. <laughs> this could be your featured amateur battle on any other card. This is the second fight of the night, man. I mean, I, look, man, when, we, when B2 matched this fight, I was so stoked about this fight. Look, but, but, but hear me out, though. Rob's got to keep it on the feet. He cannot yes. sit there and be on the ground with Ricardus. And let's we'll see if he can test his chin early. Rodriguez Dansby coming out early with a one, two. He says that he knows that Rob Kale Grigsby is a Muay Thai fighter. Oh, good but punch. Dansby landing oh. big shots there. I told you his stand-up is underestimated. He's got good stand-up, man, but he prefers to do this right here and get it to the ground and work his jujitsu. Rob's got to get off the. He's got to get off the cage here. And Chef Dansby, he, he was not making any bones about it when we spoke to him yesterday at Wands. He said, "We said, what's your key to victory?" He said, "Get the get the fight to the ground and dictate the pace there." And he's well on his way there with the right side underhook, good head position here, working the body with the left hand. Yeah, see, that's exactly, so, so Fluffy's calling it right now for Rob. He's got to get the underhook on the right-hand side. He's trying to post up on that, and which is good. It's a good frame, but he's got to get that underhook to where he can spin Ricardo Stansby back into the panel and at least neutralize the situation and get back to the middle of the cage where I think Rob needs to be to win this fight. Rob K.O. Grigsby just being ornery in this clinch position, pushing on the face, perfectly legal. Rodriguez Stansby lands it several knees to the body now. And we talked about this with Rob. He said, Andy, everybody tries to fight me this way. I'm used to this. I can take punishment. Good uppercut by Ricardus Dansby right there in the clinch. Rob's used to this kind of fight, man. Everybody fights Rob this way. Nobody wants to stand with him. A very measured approach here for Rodriguez Dansby early on in the first round. As you see him tying up the left hand there of Rob K.O. Grigsby. And why not? You're in complete control right now. And you don't want to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe, right in the center of the cage with Rob K.O. Grigsby. Very intelligent game plan early well, on in this fight. And we say that, too, but Ricardo Stansby had some right. success on the feet, did he right. not? Right, yes, he did. And, but we never would have thought. I, I would have thought that Rob would have had a little bit more slight advantage on the feet. He still might. Right. We hadn't seen enough. But Ricardo is, is fighting a smart fight. Rob's got to get off the cage, man. He can't just sit here and be taking these knees and trading knees with this guy because guess what? I guarantee you the judges are looking at octagon control, or I'm sorry, cage control, and that's exactly what they're going to score this round to. Rodriguez Dansby landing another knee to the body. Very wise, just kneeing right over top of his own left hand there. Straight well, to the body. Them little knees to the legs right there, if this thing goes into the late third round, you can start feeling them legs, man. You know, them little knees to the legs right there. They don't hurt, but they're very annoying. And they'll make you forget about something that's going on up top, too. So good job by Ricardo Stansby. I love the pressure, and this is exactly what he needed to do to win the fight. Rob's got he's got to get off that overhook, man. He's got to get that underhook on that right side. He's, he's going to stay right there. Good knee by Rob, though, but they're just trading knees back and forth. He's got to get that underhook. Rodriguez stands. He's going to town with the right hand. Now he switched his underhook from the right side to the left side. Rob K.O. Grigsby starting to come up on an overtie over top of the head. And a dominant round here for Rodriguez Dansby. I mean, dominated the clinch position there.
All right, guys, we are going to go to the red corner to see what Chris Connolly has to say to Rodriguez Dansby. Sounded like Chris Conley wanted a little bit more pressure out of Rodriguez Stansby there in the standing positions right there when you stand in front of Rob K.O. Grigsby. And of course, Chris Conley, one of the most accomplished, if not the most accomplished coach in Alabama MMA. Honored to have him there. And a big body kick attempt there for Rob K.O. Grigsby. Rodriguez Stansby catches it and kicks. Rob K.O. Grigsby on an arm bar attempt here. He's starting to get stretched out though. Yeah, he's starting to get stretched out. He don't have that. And look, I think what Chris Conley was really trying to say, too, is that the pressure was good. I think he wants to take down. Whoop, he got it. I mean, right here, he caught the, the hard body kick from Rob, and Dansby is exactly where Dansby wants to be. Chris Conley yelling, get your arms out. Rob Grigsby threatening a, a triangle attempt here, but a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is Rodriguez Dansby, again, under Chris Conley. Spartan Fitness, SBG Birmingham, as he takes the back. Of Rob Kale Grigsby got a little bit high there. Uh, good job by Rob Very Grigsby. Nice. But Rob needs to get up here. He needs to stand. He don't need to try to grapple with Dansby, man. Being a brown belt and who Dansby trains with, he needs to get back up to the feet is what he should have done then. Good foot stomp. And Chris Conley saying, Shug, I want your hands locked. He wants a body lock for Sugar Bear. He Rodriguez wants that body Dansby. lock so he can do the whoop de doop on Rob Grisby. Yeah, standing for the okie doke. Yeah, little, the okie doke. Yeah, the little the bend and shuffle. I like that. And here you see a big Beautiful trip, trip for Rob K.O. Grigsby. And this is the most success Rob has had in this position so far. And this is the dominant position on the ground, right? This neutralizes jujitsu to yes. a certain point. And he needs to sit here, he needs to posture up and start raining down punches on Dansby. Nice job for Rodriguez Dansby, turning, fitting in, getting separation with the elbow. Oh, big shots landing for Rob K.O. Grigsby oh, here. Man, Rob's hitting him. Oh, big right hand barely missed by oh, Dansby. Dansby's wobbled. He's throwing back. This fight just got real interesting, Andy. Yeah, it did. This is exactly the fight that Rob Grigsby wants right here. Dansby tries to tie up. Good job. Good knee by, by Dansby. One minute remaining in the second round. It appears that Rodriguez Dansby is in a little bit of trouble. Very wisely tying up Rob K.O. Grigsby here. I don't understand why Rob Grigsby's not trying to re right, trying to release and get back to the middle of the cage. He really poured it on there for about he 30 did. seconds, perhaps taking a break here, trying to catch his breath. 45 seconds remaining. And for people at home, whenever he was framing out like that, I know you saw the the knee to the head was right there, but in Alabama, amateurs are not allowed to throw the knee to the head. Ever. So if people are at home be like, oh, he missed the knee to the head. He's not allowed to throw that strike. You know, these knees to the body from Rodriguez Dansby are, are gruesome, just violent. And Chris Conley in the one more gym red corner telling Sugar Bear, Rodriguez Dansby, you are not tired. Continue throwing that knee to the body. He wants a lot of activity out of him in this position. He does, and I really hope Fluffy Man, that's in Rob Grisby's corner, I really hope he talks to him about getting them underhooks. He's really married to that overhook, and that overhook's keeping him stationary where he's at. If he would get that underhook and turn Dansby around, he could either separate himself and get back to the middle of the cage, or be more in the dominant position having Dansby up against the cage panel. There was that replay right there with a huge body kick to start off round two. Dansby took him down. Watch this, this throw right here. Whoop, whoop. Beautiful job by Rob. I didn't, I didn't know Rob had that in it, man. I'm gonna be honest <laughs> with you. Well, he's a powerful man, you he know. Is. A big hip wheel throw, a, a very strong technique. And you see here on the replay, Rob K.O. Grigsby with his brightest moment in the fight so far. Tying together several strikes there. Rob K.O. Grigsby is a guy that is coming to hurt you, Andy. Every minute, every second in this fight, he's trying to create pain. 
He is, man. I just would like to see him stop accepting Dansby pushing him up against the cage with that over that that big underhook that Dansby's getting and throwing them knees down. I will, you know, I really want Rob to, to not not accept that, man. He can't accept this into the third round right now. I, I mean, I really feel like he might need to finish in this fight. Third and final round. I, I could see a judge giving that second round to Rob K.O. Grigsby. He had the big toss and he had some good stand up. This could potentially be anybody's fight. Oh, big right hand lands for Chef Sugar Bear. Now there's the body lock that Chris Connolly wanted. Rob Kale Grigsby framing with the right hand. Still on that overhook, as you said, Andy. He is, and, and Rob's got it. He's got, I mean, it's go time. We talk about it all the time. It's go time. And I can see that too, Hacker, where a judge would give Rob Grigsby that second round. I can see that. But I just feel like he, he, he can't stay here, man. He definitely can't stay here because I guarantee you Dansby won the first round. Oh, absolutely. Off of this technique that we're exactly. seeing here, just hold him on the cage. And, again, you can't say it enough. It's a very wise game plan to it, hold the dangerous man's back on the cage. But, see, look, man, his hands are loose. Like, there's plenty of room for Rob to pummel underneath and get that under. There it is right there. there. you got to jack that sucker up. you got to jack it up to the room. And, look, Sugar Bear. Immediately re-pummeling. And, and Rob Grigsby had his right side under hook for about five seconds before Rodriguez Dansby immediately re-pummels. Exactly. And see that over that over hook on that left side for Grigsby, man, it's keeping him here. Rodriguez Dansby attempting a, a bit of a feet to back trip there. Uh, working a strong base for Rob KO Grigsby. And look, man, if this fight finishes this way, Rodriguez Dansby as a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu under Chris Conley, SBG Birmingham. This is, a, uh, and Rodriguez Dansby, a man who has been training and grappling in martial arts for a long time. And you're seeing Rob K.O. Grigsby not been training that long. This is a learning experience for him if he should go on to lose this fight by way of clinch position and overhooks. And what you learn from this is get your underhooks. Get your underhooks, as you're saying, Andy. I really feel like that's the key to this fight. I think that that's, that's the number one thing the reason why Dansby's winning this fight is because Rob is not pumbling in and getting his underhooks. And he's he's been married to that damn overhook, and it's kept him here. But, hey, you got to give Dansby all the credit in the world, man. Absolutely. What a great game plan. Hey, being out for two years, almost three years, and we've been trying to match him up. Everybody, Nobody wants to fight this kid, man. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to fight him. And he, we finally got him a match up tonight because Rob's game. And he's he's got a good game plan coming back, getting the feet wet again. Well, you know what? When you have a guy that – Nobody wants to fight. Your first call should be to Team Ten Bears and War Squad because hey. Rob Kale Grigsby, Elijah Woodruff, all those guys there, they are not turning fights down. No, they're not. They, they don't know what no means. Exactly. They, they, they don't. Let's do it. But you know what? They worked their way up to get where they're at. Today. Yes. I mean, Elijah, Rob, I mean, they got new up and coming guys yes. coming up. I can't wait to see these guys coming up and, and see where they go and, and how they, uh, you know, develop into mixed martial artists. And, and one thing I want to say, Andy, excuse me, I'm sorry for interrupting no, you. No, go ahead. These guys, again, in Team Ten Bears and War Squad, Rob Kale, Grigsby, Elijah Woodruff, they're going about their amateur careers in the right way. With every single fight they take, their records, as we finish the fight here, Rob Kale, Grigsby with big shots there at the final bell and a show of love between the two fighters. That's what this sport is all about. To finish my thought there, this is what amateur is all about. Rob Kale Grigsby, he doesn't have the record that he would want to have. Again, this is his 11th fight. He would love to be 11-0, but he's learning. He's taking tough fights. Same for Elijah Woodruff. These guys are going about it in the right way. Right. Look at this calf kick right there. Boom. The start of the third round. Beautiful job. A beautiful job by Dansby to counter that. One, two, one, two. All, th all three of them punches landed. And then... He was in Dansby's world for the third round, exactly what Dansby did. He stuck with the game plan, looked really good. But to go back on and kind of have a feedback on what you just said, Hacker, who gives a crap about his amateur record, right? Because guess what? He's going to be a great pro one day yes. because he's fought the who's who's. He's been in every scenario in the fight game. He's been rocked. He's been submitted. He's been knocked down. He's knocked people down. He's done everything in support. And I hope he's not taking off his glove saying he's done, because I hope that's not the, the case here. Yeah, we, we, um, we certainly hope that's not I hope the I'm case. not jumping to conclusions on that, because I will go back there right now and tell him, you better put them damn gloves back on, man. You're not giving this up. No, no, no. Rob K.O. Grigsby is a, a man that is going to make some money in this sport before he quits 100%. And we don't got to worry about this one. Lance Green has the scorecards. Let's go to him now for the official decision. V2 Fighting Series fans, after three, 
grueling rounds. This decision has gone to your judges. All three judges see this battle the same way, and they score it 30-27 for your winner by unanimous decision. Out of the red corner, Rodriguez, Sugar Bear Dansby. All right, Rodriguez, Sugar Bear Dansby gets his long-awaited return victory, almost three years to, to get that feeling. You see Chris Conley in there, kicking off the night right for Spartan Fitness and SBG Birmingham.